Hello, today we are going to discuss about the 20 basic terms in accounting. This thing is there in your syllabus of class 11. So let's get started. Okay, so uh, without explaining these terms one by one, I want to tell you a story. Okay, I'm not telling you the story of anyone else, but it can be the life story of one of you also. Okay, so after a completion of studies, what you are expecting to do? Either you are going for any job or any business or a profession. Okay, now I'll talk about those who are aspiring to be the businessmen after some point of time. I mean, after they complete their studies in future. Okay, even if you do not complete your study, you can start something to uh, earn something. Okay, now obviously I'm saying this that you have to do something to earn something. It means that when you are going for any business activity, you are thinking of earning some money. Isn't it? Because as we know from the uh, definition of business that it is an activity with an objective to make some profit. So obviously if you don't want to earn anything, don't go for business. Go for charity then. Okay. Now what you are going to do, you don't have money right now because you are still a student and after you complete your studies, if you don't have any job at your hand, then that means that you don't have money with you. Now what can you do? with uh, this situation you don't have money but still you want a business to start okay now if you ask someone to lend you some money then obviously your credit worthiness should be there i mean you have to be with a good name or reputation at the market that yes if someone lends you money then you are going to pay him back on time isn't it but you don't have that reputation also because you are the starter you are just starting your business. So you don't have any kind of reputation or goodwill in the market. That means no one is going to lend you money. Then what are you going to do? Obviously, you have to think whether you want to do manufacturing business or retailing business. <clears throat> in case of manufacturing business, obviously, there are several things which are needed. That means you have to do something with the raw material. So you need machines. Okay, now you cannot do everything, you cannot complete that everything uh, only by yourself. So you need some people to help you out. There can be several other expenses that you have to incur. Now, the best way is to go for retailing business. Retailing means when you purchase something, the finished goods only you purchase and you sell them to the ultimate customers. So now for this retailing business, what are you going to do? You have to ask the supplier of the finished product from whom you are going to purchase that to give you those things on credit. Credit means you are not going to pay them in cash on the date of delivery of the goods, but you will pay them at a later date which is decided by you and that person. Okay, so purchasing of goods can be of two types, one on cash, another one on credit. Now, I'm giving another example that when uh, you must have gone to uh, some shopping malls to purchase anything. Now, whenever you go to a shop where you find something which is of very low rate of amount or lower value, obviously you have to pay them in cash, right? If you have purchased your uh, notebooks or pen, pencils, whatever it is from any stationary shop, then obviously you have to pay them in cash whenever you take the delivery of the goods. But what about TV, refrigerators, ACs? Those have higher value items. Those can be purchased with EMI scheme. EMI means easy monthly installment. So you are not going to pay them in cash when you are taking the delivery of the goods, but you are paying them at a later date. It can be through installments by dividing the total amount into different parts or it can be one time payment, but at a later date. So whenever you are paying the shopkeeper at a later date, it is called purchase on credit. Okay, now the supplier has also uh, already agreed that you can purchase some materials from him on credit and you have persuaded him that yes, whenever I'll get the payment from the customers, then I'll get back to you and give the payment to you. Okay, so what are you purchasing? You are purchasing goods, 
okay so what is the definition of goods goods are the things which you purchase to resale okay now goods any kind of material or any kind of thing can be of three types one can be this for reselling purpose that we call goods another one can be for the purpose of earning more money at a future date those are regarded as assets and some things are there which you use in your daily life those are called consumables okay i am giving you the examples now when you are purchasing some notebooks okay you are you have thought that okay i am going to open a stationery shop so i am going to purchase the notebooks from the suppliers on wholesale rate and i am going to sell them on retail rate to the customers okay now when you are purchasing the notebooks for reselling purpose then these are called goods for you but when you are purchasing the notebooks for your own consumption that means you are just trying to make some records on that how many how many customers have been made by you how much amount of uh, how much quantity of rather quantity of uh, notebooks you have sold to them all this record should be maintained in a in a book or in a whatever it is so that notebook where you are maintaining all these records is consumed by you it is used by you so that notebook is not your goods it is your consumable okay now say you are uh, you are a retailer you are a reseller of uh, the notebooks but you are thinking okay i know something about commerce okay i have graduated after 11 12 you will obviously go to college and after that you will be graduate and you know something about commerce right so you are thinking that okay fine i can do one thing i can make some notes on it i ha already have some notes and i can modify those notes and then i can sell these notes to the children who are now in class 11 12 you can think like that okay so what will you do you will take one of your notebooks which you had purchased from the supplier on credit and will write the notes on it okay and then sell these notes not the notebook sell this by clicking the picture you will upload it uh, somewhere or you can start a youtube channel okay you can um, make pdf files and sell them and send them towards uh, to the customers or the students which which who will be your customers obviously you can do so okay now when you are selling the notes not the notebooks that means what the notebooks are used to generate some income in future those are not directly generating any income because you are not selling the notebooks but they are indirectly helping you to generate some income that means these notebooks are used by you as assets okay so anything that you purchase in your business can be of three types one something which you want to resell that are known as goods something which you do not want to resell but use it to generate more income that is known as asset and something which you use for yourself it is called consumable okay now next we are going to think about transactions okay now what are these transactions as in the definition it is written it is an exchange of goods and services between two or more people okay now when you are purchasing the notebooks from the supplier this is an exchange of goods and services this is not service obviously this is an exchange of goods okay now while i am teaching you this is the exchange of service because i am i am giving you the service of a tutor right so this is also a transaction don't get confused with the financial transaction or normal transaction financial transaction obviously will be based on some money matters there should be some money involved in it okay but normal transaction as you see in this uh, slide or that is there in your syllabus it is normal transaction it can be either financial or non financial but transaction itself means it is an exchange of goods or services between two or more people okay now next we are going to think about assets assets will be discussed later on 
uh, in details and some of some things of it are already discussed as i have already told you assets are the resources that you own which can be used to generate income in future okay the later part of it will be discussed in the later slides after this next stock okay now stock means it is a combination of all kinds of goods that you have purchased and want to resell okay now say for example we are going back to the story that uh, when you have uh, started this business you are you were thinking at that time that okay i'll sell the notebooks and uh, i'll get some profit from there and i'll pay that amount whatever is left to be paid to the supplier now you are seeing that there are many competitors with for you okay so what are you going to do you have to improvise your business plan now you are thinking that okay fine if i can make gift packs involving one notebook two pens one pencil like that then my sale may be boosted then maybe some customers will be eager to purchase my uh, goods because i am giving them something extra i'm packing them into a gift pack okay so what are the things required there notebooks are required that is already with you and you have to purchase pen and pencils so you again approach another supplier or maybe that supplier only that please give me on credit all these things that i need to buy from you i'll definitely pay you back okay and then again he agrees i don't know how many suppliers are there who will agree to you on every step but still let us believe that everyone agrees with you now what are you going to do you will pack them all of them together and uh, make it in a gift pack when you are taking the stock when you are calculating how much quantity of stock you have you will calculate by adding pen pencils and notebooks together okay so stock is a combination or it is the addition of all kinds of goods that you hold at a point of time okay next we are going to start with the liabilities as with assets comes the liability liabilities are the charges or claims against the assets okay so what are these liabilities that we'll learn in the next slide obviously after we learn assets creditors okay now when you are purchasing something from a supplier on credit that person owes some money from you you have to pay some money to him at a later date so that person is regarded as creditor for you because he gives credit okay now don't get confused with uh, the creditors for this supply of goods or creditors for supply of assets okay the creditors are of two types creditors for asset who gives you asset on credit and creditors who gives you goods on credit are known as trade creditors okay next one vouchers now maybe whenever you have purchased something from any big shop you have seen that some kind of bill is generated by them and it is given to you okay this is for two purpose one is for evidence another for verification that means that whenever you get that bill you can be identified that yes you are the customer who had purchased this this thing from the shopkeeper at this date with that amount okay so three things are written in any kind of voucher bill is also a voucher any kind of voucher one date of transaction second amount of transaction and third the type of transaction i mean if it is credit or cash or what are the kinds of goods that are purchased everything in details are written over there okay so when the bill is generated it is generated for two purpose evidence okay if later date you want to <clears throat> say for example you don't like that good and you want to return that to the shopkeeper how can you make yourself uh, make him believe that you are that customer who had paid that sum and now you want to return that uh, goods back to you and you want the money back uh, from that cust uh, from that supplier how can you prove that with this bill 
okay and for verification it means that from the uh, shopkeeper's point of view also it must be verified that whether you had actually purchased it or not then when you produce the bill to him obviously he will check his records if he finds that record in his own books of accounts then only he will allow this to be returned okay so this have got the two purpose one is evidence another for verification next we are going to think about expenses okay now um, say for example you had purchased a, a quite a lot of uh, stock that uh, notebooks pen pencils everything you have purchased and before sale you are thinking where should i keep these things okay because you need some place to keep it safe and secured before sale right so you want to uh, take the go down on rent because you don't have any enough money to purchase the go down and you don't have enough space at your home to hold uh, to keep all these items so you have to take a go down on rent now this rent is your expense so expenses are something that you have to pay to run the business on a regular or daily basis okay so don't get confused with the word expenditure expenditure means something which you pay to acquire the assets and expenses means something which you pay for smooth running of the business okay now let us discuss about sales what is this sales is also an exchange of goods and services that means it is a transaction which happens by the businessman to earn something okay and like purchase these are also of two types one is on credit another is in cash next comes debtors like debtors creditors is someone who owes you something okay now credit uh, debtors means that the person who has purchased something from you that means you have sold some goods to that person and that person has not paid you anything till date so that person becomes your debtors just like you had persuaded the supplier to supply you goods on credit some customers will obviously be there who will pursue you that okay give us the goods on credit so you need to give them on credit and they become your debtors okay now comes revenues revenues are nothing but income from sales okay now sales is the transaction and revenue means whatever you get from selling the uh, um, selling the quantity of goods okay next come discount discount means something which you give as an advantage to the customers or something that you receive as an advantage from the creditors or suppliers okay so what are these advantages it can be trade discount it can be cash discount or it can be any other kind of special discount okay this will be learned in some next uh, in the next class but uh, discount means in a nutshell it is some advantages that you get or give to someone to reduce the value of sales or purchase next we are going to discuss about profit okay now every businessman has an has one objective only that is to earn more and more profit no one wants loss right so in this case profit means operating profit plus any other profit i mean whenever you go for calculation of profit from the profit and loss account you know we calculate the profit from whatever transactions we had during the year it can be the transaction of goods it can be the transaction of assets it can be transaction from uh, investments it can be financial transactions it can be many kind of transactions but whatever we gain out of those transactions is your profit okay now what is loss anything which comes to you when expenses are more than your income okay what does that mean that when expenses exceed your income 
when you cannot recover all the expenses from the income that you have then the loss occurs okay and we generally calculate loss from our pl account only now expenditure expenditure is already explained something which we pay to acquire the assets right next gain now what is the difference between profit and gain profit means something that you gain out of any kind of transaction but pro gain means something which you gain out of only capital transactions capital transaction means that when you purchase the asset you have to pay something that is your expenditure and when you sell the assets you gain something you have some money from the purchaser of the assets okay so if this income is more than the expenditure that you made when you acquired that asset it means that you have gained okay next we are going to discuss about capital now as i started this story i told you that you don't have any money in your hand right and you wanted to start a business so you have already started now if you want to expand that business it is not possible without money because you have to uh, take something some assets you have to acquire uh, any go down because obviously your business is expanding so your stock is also expanding and you have to make many such expenses any expense that you make will not be provided by anyone else if it is provided by anyone else that means you have some amount as loan which is your liability but you don't want to take any such liability right now when you are starting any business right if you don't have money still you try to acquire some money and invest that money from your pocket to the business so any money invested from the owner is known as capital okay next drawings drawings means something that you draw out of your capital that means say for example you have that those notebooks with you now you want to gift one notebook out of them to your friend who has a birthday okay now on his birthday you want to gift that notebook now this is a personal transaction right it is not related to your business so you want to take one notebook out of your stock and gift it to your friend this is one of the transaction which is known as drawings if you want some amount of capital or any goods or anything else from your business and use it for your personal uh, experience then obviously that is meant as drawings the last one here is entity now as you started the business obviously business becomes an entity entity means it is a separate personal or separate thing you can say who has got some advantages who has got some rights who has got some disadvantages or liabilities okay now in case of sole proprietorship the proprietor that means the owner of the business and the business itself is not separable but in case of companies it is separable okay now this thing will be discussed in details in some later classes obviously but for now entity is the legal person who is making the transaction in its own name this thing you can understand okay a company makes all the transactions on its own name the owners do not transact on their own name okay there can be several uh, number of uh, there can be several number of owners or shareholders in a company they don't have their own name in the company seal and we don't know their name also we know the name of the company because company has got separate legal entity okay so entity means something who has got separate legal existence and it can deal with someone it can make transactions with someone on its own name okay now let's go to the next slide so we are from virtual world of learning you can find us on facebook youtube telegram and also email us at a new era of education 2020 at the rate gmail.com thank you all